all right what's good everyone welcome back to another video in this video i'm going to be customizing my s25 ultra and just showing you the day one customizations that i do including good luck home screen apps all that stuff icons so yeah let's get into it so first things first you're going to notice the home screen i'm going to go up to the app drawer actually and this is where i start my customization so with samsung phones you can select multiple apps at one time so i'm just going to select all the apps that i don't need on the phone that might come pre-installed and things like that and then I'm just going to delete them and I'll show you how it's super fast deleting apps on Samsung devices. All right, so I have all the apps that I don't want selected. I'm just going to go to uninstall and then it's just going to say, OK, OK, OK. Some apps you might not be able to uninstall, but you can definitely disable them and it will work through here, too. So OK, OK, OK. And then boom. So now all the apps that I don't want are gone from the phone or they're disabled. So now the next thing I do is I organize my apps into different folders in the app drawer so that it's just easy to find them i'll put lumifusion in work put facebook instagram twitter discord tiktok i'll put all those into socials right here then credit karma into finances all right so now that that's done all my apps are in their folders organized by alphabetical order i did that manually because it doesn't automatically do that anymore the next thing that i'll get into in terms of customization is good luck so i go to good luck then I download all the plugins that I actually use. All right, so one of the main things I use is One Hand Operations. You might have seen this in other videos if you watch my channel. But basically, you can customize how swipe gestures work on your phone. So down swipe, side swipe, up swipe. And then you can also swipe and hold for three additional things. So you can have up to, to six different toggles with uh, these swipe gestures on each side. But normally, I just leave the normal quick swipe as back for all the directions. And then I turn on long swipe for different things. So for a swiping straight, I'll put it to the quick launcher. For a swiping up diagonally, I'll do split screen. Then swiping down, I'll bring up the quick tools right here. And then I customize quick tools and put all the toggles that I want. So you see Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all that stuff. I'll change it. I'll delete all the ones I don't need. I'll add hotspot. And that's basically it. And then the quick launcher menu, show recent apps. When you open it up, you'll be able to customize what apps are on here as well. But yeah, I do that for both sides. And then the next thing I'll change with one hand operations is I'll turn off animations. So that way there's no like, there's no arrow popping up when you swipe from the side of the screen. And then also I will turn off S Pen gestures so that S Pen can't activate these gestures. And then I'll go to gesture settings, turn down the swipe distance, and then long swipe duration, I'll turn that down as well. So in that way, boom i could just you know do this very quickly but then if i if i'm back swiping i know that i'm just back swiping it's very easy to switch between the two and that's basically it for one hand operations i will adjust the side i do also adjust the size of it and the position so that it doesn't get in the way of the edge panel next thing i'll customize is multi-star so i love samsung decks high resolution so i can have you know up to 4k with samsung decks on the external screen run many apps at a time, more than five apps, auto open last app. And then we go back and multi-focus is very important so that certain apps don't stop running when you click onto a different app. And then I'll remove the blur effect because I don't need that. Keep split mode, prevent pop-up minimization is very important to me. So put this into a floating window. Normally if you swipe up, then the floating window will close and minimize. But with prevent pop-up minimization, it stays there always until I close it myself or toss it off to the side. And that's basically it for multi-star camera assistant. I turn on these shortcuts right here. Then I go to auto lens switching. I turn that off. Camera timeout, I turn that to 10 minutes. And that's basically it. Other things I might change if I need to. Register, I use this as well to customize the power button mainly. There are some cool things here like customizing your settings, which I will do eventually. You can change the order of the settings app. I really like that feature and you can also hide certain things too that is nice but i'll change that later on can allow the creation of a search option when you're in the search menu but mainly i come here just for the side button so i turn this on and then screenshot so now when i hold the side button i can take a screenshot very easily you can also do different things like open app back button so many different things that you can do and just also is back tap where you can double tap triple tap to activate different things like open app or do different functions that is cool too, but I mainly just use the side key. And then sound assistant, very important to me as well. Basically, you go here, turn this on, then go back, and that enables individual app volume. So if I press the volume key and I go to this, you'll see individual apps starting to pop up, and you can adjust those apps individually, which is nice. If you're playing a game and listen to a podcast, 
then you can adjust the game volume and the podcast volume at the same time so that you don't have to mute one or the other and then i go down and i also multi-sound and i just allow all apps to play at the same time if if i have them playing that's basically it for sound assistant and then normally i would adjust home up and navstar but it seems like navstar is not working right now on one ui7 and home up is apparently gone so we'll see if they change that later on but i'll go to theme park for now and what i do in theme park is just customize the icons so i have an icon pack that i use it is called retro mode light this is a paid icon pack in the play store you can find it so after you apply it not all apps have specific icons in this icon pack so what you do is you go to change icon right here swipe down and you'll see all these apps that are blank they don't have their own individual icons so you can just manually change them and this icon pack has many different icons that you can choose from so i'm just going to choose some icons to fill up those icons that don't have anything so let's just say charge i can put that for your charge points japanese let's just say i search language or something or word yeah whatever here put that all right so i'm done changing all the icons now i'm just going to press done you press that arrow going down and then it's saved then you can just apply it like this and boom now all my icons are applied and there you go my custom icons so yeah, that is, I guess that's it for good luck now until Home Up comes back and then also until Navstar is fixed as well. But you can check out my previous videos on good luck where you can see my full Samsung customizations there. And yeah, now next I go into settings and navigation bar and then go down block with S Pen and circle search, turn that off. And I can't fully customize the navigational bar because the good luck options are not there. But normally I turn off this right here at the bottom and this little gap. And then it will basically allow my phone to just be clean, but still be able to do the same functions without this little bar right here, the hint. And then next, I'll probably go to, you know, my wallpaper and stuff and customize that. And then the always on display, I'll customize that as well. Show always. The lock screen is very important too. So let me actually go and fix that up. So wallpapers and styles, and then I'm just going to tap the lock screen and change the shortcuts. So I have these two. I'll add some widgets. I'll add battery. I'll also add samsung health stats probably the weather and that's it we good so now next is customizing the home screen so basically i'm not really sure how i'm going to customize it yet but i know they added these large folders which is, is nice i like to use these when i use like oneplus phones and stuff like that so i'll probably use those but one main thing for me when i customize my home screen on a samsung device is i also like to use the samsung apps anyways like samsung calendar samsung email all the Samsung specific apps and their widgets can all be transparent. So if you just tap on the widget, edit it, you can choose the background to be gone. So now it has a transparent aesthetic. And the cool thing about Samsung calendar is you can actually write on it with the S Pen. I can go to like the 16th and write, you know, important, draw a circle and it snaps. So when you draw shapes and stuff like that too, it snaps on the calendar and then I can save it. And boom it even saves on the home screen as well if you go into the calendar app you'll also see what you drew as well so that's cool and then going back to what i was talking about with the transparent background turn that off and boom now it just looks so sick like you have the s pen drawing you have your days your calendar stuff but it's transparent background and all the samsung apps that have widgets you can do this transparent background thing so that's pretty cool that's one main customization thing i do with my samsung devices and then if we go back to settings and then go to home screen again there's one more thing i like to have the maximum grid so seven by seven folder grid is also something that i max out and yeah and then after my home screen and stuff like that i go to my quick toggle menu and i just put important things like extra dim is important lock in the rotation airplane mode flashlight data all that stuff and then you can also customize this layout now and this is kind of how i have mine so i have these things at the bottom for quick access and media controls and then everything else and then after all that i customize the edge panel this is something i use a lot for different things multitasking just the tools that it has so many different use cases for edge panels so what you do is you open the edge panel go to the pen and then add all the apps that you would want here so calendar all right so these are basically all the apps that i want on my edge panel and then i'll edit it later to you know put them in the order that i want but that's what i do after that and then there's also for the edge panel there's many different pages and these ai additions now that you can turn on and off i'll leave them on actually i'll turn off interpreter and i'll leave the rest also show recent apps i like that as well but this is what i changed so there's 
tap and hold to drag into a floating window or split screen and then the, there's just tap so for me the edge panel i use it a lot for multitasking so let's say i'm in the internet before i go tap internet again it's a quick split screen with just you know two taps for whatever app you choose that is very fast as opposed to having to tap and drag every single time if you turn the tap feature off then when you tap the app it will just take up the whole screen but you can also drag an app into floating window from here as well so that's really nice and samsung phones are currently the only phones that can do up to four floating windows at a time you might think it's crazy but i use this all the time on my samsung devices there's so many use cases for having multiple floating windows so i go hard with that and i have my split screens and stuff at the same time it's it just puts in a lot of work because look at this this is such a quick and easy workflow put all these things aside recall them back and use them as you need them the next thing i'll customize with the edge panel is if you go to the gear wheel at the bottom you can actually add different pages and these pages are all useful in their own ways different people might use different ones but for me i turn on specifically the tools reminder and that's basically it tools and reminder so how those ones work is basically you have a bunch of different tools so this is a compass right now and then if you tap the icons right here you can do a tally counter so if you're trying to keep track of something you can use this very quickly turn off vibration turn on vibration set a target reset then at the top again there is flashlight so you can also use the flashlight but adjust the level from here and then there is surface level so this is really cool too basically using your phone as a leveler that is really tough and then ruler and it's an accurate ruler as well so these quick tools are just useful for different things like you never know when you'll need a leveler you never know when you'll need a ruler you never know when you will need a compass things like that so i just leave that on and then having my reminders here quickly is really nice too to add a reminder look at reminders deal with them etc but mainly i use it for multitasking so that's my edge panel setup and that's basically it for how i customize my s25 ultra on day one and i will make an updated video once you know the good luck stuff gets worked out and once i find a setup that is nice for me so if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe i got another video coming where i customize samsung decks with this phone this is basically my main computer right now so stay tuned for future videos on that and how that experience is but until the next video we are out peace